Once again, utilizing the same type of little awning system that I had, just because I think it looks good. Why change it if it looks good, right? But yeah, so this, uh, someone had a baby, but here we go. The last two animals going in right now. So with that being said, and with the guest thinking tickets are underpriced, we are going to go ahead and close Maple Leaf Wildlife Park. Hello and welcome back to Planet Zoo. As you can see, we're back in the zoo and it is a very rainy day. We have about four habitats to build with multiple guest facilities all around the park that really need to be worked on. So we have a ton to get done today in this zoo. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to break away, start on our first habitat, get that completed, and I'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, and welcome back, guys. So I have been gone for quite some time. I've got a lot accomplished. You can see a little bit of it right there. One thing I do want to say before we get into the rest of this is I want to say thank you for all the comments in the last video for the people that reminded me that the Famotion Black Bear was a shy creature. So I did go in and I did make all of the glass around the facility. All this is now one way glass. So hopefully that will help our Famotion Black Bear and not be quite so stressed. And I also did put up some signs, as you can see, around the uh, habitat as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done. So I created this small little area right here just some scenery it was a very strange area in the path after i created our little information station that is currently unmanned but that is okay he will be coming back here shortly coming back right now it looks like and then if we continue up the path you see that i've gone ahead and i've put lights on all the way up the path and, ooh, and we're going to look at the ground for a minute but if we come up here this is going to be our next enclosure and so once again, I did kind of do like a little cave type dwelling system and I was going to try and do a waterfall, but in this version, I cannot manipulate the train at all. If you go down here, try to do anything, it is locked by the scenario. So that is one thing that I really wish I could do. I wish I could manipulate the train and actually create a realistic looking waterfall. Anyway, not a whole lot done with this particular facility, to be honest. I did use the chain link fencing around the facility or around the enclosure and then nothing else has been done except for building this small little cave we have some uh of our staff facilities right back there and if we turn right over here i did make another small little area with a chief beef and a gulpy soda right across from here with some outdoor seating and things like that now of course the outdoor seating will not be utilized but it looks good of course some more bathrooms and uh lights all over the place benches donation bins and monitors for education and of course speakers once again utilizing the same type of little awning system that i had previous just because i think uh it looks good why change it if it looks good right <laughs> so uh, with that being said we're going to go ahead hit play and here comes our caretaker with one of our animals now and we have a timber wolf so the timber wolves are going to be right up here we do have a male and a female timber wolf. I do not know where the female timber wolf is just yet. Let's take a look at their terrain since I haven't done anything with it. Terrain's not bad. They obviously do have plenty of space. They have plenty of hard shelter. I wanted to make sure and give them enough space. Is this our female? Yeah, this is our female. I do not know where our male timber wolf is. He should have been uh, right behind her. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait. But yeah, like, like I was saying, let's take a look at this. So they want a lot more short grass and a lot more long grass as well. Or they have too much short grass and they need a lot more long grass. So I can go ahead and start taking care of that real quick. Now, again, this is the uh, just very simply the uh, nope. need more short grass. Uh, I did that wrong. All right. I'll get it figured out in a minute. One of these days I'll learn to watch the sliders. But uh, as I was going to say. This is just the chain link fence, so really didn't do anything all that special with their enclosure other than build the the hard shelter form. There is our male, and here he is now, folks. Jaron, I uh, believe is how you would pronounce that. Not real sure, but anyway, let's go ahead and get what little enrichment we can for them uh, going on. All right, and that's going to be about it because that is basically all that we know about our timber wolves currently. There we go. Put them back in action. Uh, ice block, a bamboo feeder, which I would not think unless they're going to put like peanut butter in it, cardboard box, and then a pre of course the prey sack. Is that what that is? Yeah, prey scent snack. That's really all we're going to do up here with the exception of I am going to throw in some more trees and a bunch more foliage 
of course, you know, they could have quite a bit more coverage. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in a lot more trees, kind of lining the back and sides of the area uh, over this way as well. They have too much long, too much short grass now. What am I missing? Snow. They want snow. I can do that. It snows here naturally anyway. All right. And there we go. Now we've got the train much better. So I'm going to go ahead and break away, put up some trees around the facility. And I'm also going to take care of one additional thing real quick, and then I will be back with you guys in just a minute. Okay, guys, and welcome back. As you can see, I have uh, done quite a bit of decoration on the uh, on our wolves here. Let's actually go ahead and turn on our education boards to our timber wolves while I'm, while I'm looking at it. I've been gone for quite some time, but this is not the only thing that I have accomplished during this time. So here in just a second, we'll turn around here and... We have our Wolf Den Grill right across the street. So we have a Bernie's Bakery, a uh, Gulpy Slushy, and a Looney Balloons right down here with two more restrooms. And then on top of that, we have our Wolf Den Grill. So it's an actual functioning restaurant for our guests to go in and get a bite to eat. So maybe they want to sit down and, I don't know, maybe gaze out at the wolves while they eat. And that beautiful sunset right there. So that is what I've been working on while I've been gone. So I'm going to go ahead and continue looking for additional animals to put in here. And I will be back with you in just a few minutes. All right, guys, and welcome back. So I have been gone for quite some time. I've been gone so long, in fact, that our wolves that we just put in have had like two or three different sets of pups. And unfortunately, we did lose both of our grizzly bears due to old age. So we do have two new grizzly bears. But if we follow this path up right up here, you can see that I do have some American bison. And so they are a taiga animal. So they kind of fit the theme of the zoo that I was going for. But really, not really, if you know what I mean. And then as far as animals available in the Trade Center or what it's allowing me to have in the Trade Center, nothing really. So welcome back once again our peafowl <laughs> so they they are going to be with us for the remainder of the zoo and uh as you can see I, I have gone ahead and put some education boards down i haven't turned them on or anything like that i guess i can go ahead and do that now they may or may not be powered yeah i guess they are powered so welcome back our peafowls once again not escaping peafowls and i did end up going with just the regular hedge barrier for this nothing crazy at this point since it won't let me have the animals that I want, I'm just going to take what it'll let me have at this point. So, as you can see, we are very, very close to completing this out. I have at least seven habitat species in the zoo. We're at six of seven and have a yearly profit of over $10,000. Well, we're up to over, uh, over $300,000. So, we're doing pretty well as far as all that is concerned. So, we don't really have to worry about money right now. But I do have our last, our last habitat animal, and I'm very excited to go ahead and put them in and get them introduced into our zoo. So I'm going to go ahead, break away, do that real quick. I will come back and I will see you in just a second. All right, guys, and welcome back. As you can see here, we have one more enclosure. And yes, I did use the same hard shelter as I did for the timber wolves. I'm hoping that the animal that we put in here will not be able to jump up on it. I was going to make something a little bit more custom, but I was so afeard that they were going to be able to jump up on it and escape. So here we go. Last one's going in right now and unpause the game. All right. And there go our, uh, our people. Apparently not going to get our animals though. But yeah. So this uh, someone had a baby. So this episode was actually very hard to produce just because uh, several times I have tried to rework this zoo and tried to come up with the animals that I thought would be the absolute best for this zoo. But unfortunately, the market just would not participate, would not help me out in that way. But here we go. The last two animals going in right now. <laughs> when I tasked you with building a zoo, I gave you some pretty ambitious targets to hit. But wouldn't you know it, you hit them all anyway. <laughs> I think it's high time we dropped that uh, apprentice from your title, huh? And to be candid, uh, 
I'm particularly glad you hit the profit target, as I paid way over the odds for the land. Frankly, the amount I spent per square foot, <laughs> you'd think I'd bought a penthouse apartment with solid gold toilets. <laughs> hmm. It was worth it, though. Anything to stop the land going to that dreadful hedge fund. Apparently, they wanted to parcel it up and sell it off to various mining and energy consortiums. They're the sort of people who'd squeeze the oil out of the Mona Lisa if they could. <sighs> All right, so now that he's done talking, well, look at this. Market expanded. All species will start to become available in the animal market. Did I not see that? Three episodes or three uh three zoos ago. I thought they were already all available, but anyway, here we are. We have our last animal that I wanted to add to the zoo. Uh once again, this is uh, an audible call. So this is the snow leopard. So here they are. Let's let them investigate their uh enclosure a bit. Oh yeah, they definitely will not be able to climb up on that. But yeah, they definitely will not be able to climb up on that. Not one bit. Okay, let's go ahead and pause it right here. I'm going to go ahead and fix up their uh, enclosure a little bit. It's severely inappropriate for this animal. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to take a look at that as well. But I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, and I am back with you. So uh, yeah, I need to really be paying attention a little bit better. It wasn't the uh, hard shelter they had an issue with. They had an issue with the strain, obviously, because they're snow leopards. So they wanted more rock and a little bit more soil and obviously some snow. So I went ahead and took care of all that for them as well. So now they're very happy little kitties. Uh, other than the fact that they do not have a lot of food, ev food enrichment, and that's just because we haven't researched them yet. But, you know, let's go ahead and come up out of here. We are ending the zoo with a $584,751.09. There's over 1,900 guests in the park. Our guests are relatively happy for the most part. They're not very well educated and they are a little bit thirsty. But other than that, they are pretty good. We ended up with... Uh, over 3,200 uh, conservation point or conservation credit in this one. So I am pretty happy with this one. Overall, I wish that more of the animals that I were, was looking for would have been available for me to be able to really do what I intended to do. But for the most part, I am happy with how this turned out. So with that being said, and with the guest thinking tickets are, are underpriced, we are going to go ahead and close Maple Leaf wildlife park and allow all the guests to leave and let's do a quick run around of the zoo and see how far we've come in just a couple of episodes that's right y'all get the hell out everybody get out everybody got my zoo and as we stroll our paths for the last time in this zoo take a look around and see actually how much we've been able to accomplish in not an extremely long amount of time i mean it's been some time in the zoo but I wouldn't say it's been a horrible amount of time. We've created these two bear enclosures over here. We do have a pretty nice uh, exhibit house in here. I still like it. Let me know what you think about that down in the comment section. Today we added, not only do we have our little restaurant, or not restaurant, but food stalls over there, but we added our information station over here. We went up the hill. We added some additional food stalls underneath our restaurant. Then we added a restaurant. Let's go ahead and go in the restaurant, take a look at that, the way the guests would, right through the walls. And here we are actually in the restaurant, kind of low lighting, just kind of nice. You can look out, see the uh, wolves from our wolf den grill and back down the stairs. And there we are, our last little food stalls and then our wolves and then the additional food stalls right over here and then back up the path where we have our american bison right up here on the right hand side well this is actually quite a bit of a walk for our guests didn't think about that but with the layout how it was it was really the best setup i i think i could come up with at the time and so here are our american bison and they're pretty happy and then we did welcome back our peafowl once again back into our zoo just because <laughs> The zoo wouldn't let me have hardly anything else. Our peafowls are very happy right now. They have way more space than what they actually need in here. And the guests, if they choose to, can walk all the way through this enclosure and come out the other side. And it is a pretty long trek over to our snow leopards. And here are our snow leopards right here. They're very happy with their little enclosure. Oh, we're expecting another baby. Probably the peafowls or the wolves. Either one of them multiply like crazy. And then we can turn down this path We'll just cut across the grass 
back on this side of our macaques our very first enclosure as you come into the zoo and that is going to do it for the zoo tour i hope you have really enjoyed this episode i did enjoy doing this one like i said it was just a little frustrating with the animals that i really wanted to have in the zoo not being available and spending hours upon hours literally searching for them but if you've enjoyed this episode please make sure you hit that like button comment down below and if you haven't already and you would like to subscribe to the channel but we're not done yet i just want to make sure that is very clear we are not done yet this is not going to be the end of our planet zoo series we are going to continue on i'm not sure as of right now what we're going to be doing next week but we will definitely have a zoo so stay tuned for that anyway as always thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one take care everybody